In the description box below, we've included great resources to assist you, including links to our how-to hub. Be sure to check it out often as we are always updating the content. Today I'm going to show you how to take two separate individual virtual smart zone installations and join them to a cluster with each other. We're going to do this in virtual smart zone version 5.1. Quick housekeeping. The controllers have to be running the same version of software to join a cluster. This example, like I mentioned before, we're running version 5.1. Further, the controllers have to be in the same operating modes. What we mean by that is high scale can work with high scale, essentials can work with essentials, but there is no cross mode functionality supported. As you can see, we have two tabs open. Our first tab is the virtual smart zone that will become the master or active controller. Our second tab is the smart zone that will be joining that cluster. Before we begin, we're just gonna verify that our master controller is running in high scale and running version 5.1. Now that we've verified that, let's take a look at the controller that will be joining the cluster and verify it's running version 5.1. Great, both controllers versions match. Now let's navigate to system and cluster. And here we're just looking for information. We're gonna copy this to the joining cluster setup wizard. So the first thing that we're gonna copy is the controller name. I'll move to our new controller tab. Here I'll select join an existing cluster. I've pasted the cluster name in, created a unique controller name, and provided a description. Next, we need the cluster IP address of our master controller so that we can tell our joining controller which IP address to utilize. So we're gonna copy that IP address, we'll paste it into the IP address field, we'll enter our admin password, and then we're gonna click on next. At this point, our system checks will initialize. This is some background checks that are happening just to verify the cluster information and ensure that there are no errors before creating the cluster. Now that the system checks are complete, we can just verify the information that we're shown. We see that we are running in high scale, the cluster name is correct, our protocol type and management IP are displayed, and we also see that we have a default country code and a system time. Everything looks great, we'll click on finish. Completing the cluster configuration at this point does not require anything to be done. It just requires patience. It took around 15 minutes to complete the cluster configuration. All in all, that's not bad. Now, we're going to click the link that's displayed here, and this will redirect us to our login page. We'll log in with our admin credentials. As you can see, it took me a couple tries and some typos you just can't edit out. Even though our GUI is now up and responding, our cluster isn't yet fully formed. Our newest member controller to the cluster is showing offline. SmartZone is working on this in the background, but for now, our best plan of attack is a little patience. This is a lengthy process. If you want, you can navigate to the application logs, which are found under Diagnostics. If the cluster fails to form, these logs can be downloaded and provided to support for further analysis. We've been patient and it's paid off. Looking at our cluster pane, we now see both controllers are online. We can also notate our leader and our follower. Finally, if we click on the dashboard link, we will see the cluster is now showing green, which means it's fully configured and healthy. Before you go, don't forget to check the description box below and access any of the resources we've provided. Thanks for watching.